Carl Rogers was also a humanist. More than anyone else, Carl Rogers invented counseling. The vast numbers of counseling psychologists, marriage and family therapists, and other mental health professionals are the product of his humanistic approach to therapy. Like Freud, Rogers believed that actual experiences become symbolized. These symbolized experiences reflect all the characteristics of an actual experience, without all the detail. It's not so much what you experience in the past as it is how you interpret or feel about it. In contrast to Freud's distant and personal psychoanalysis, Rogers created an atmosphere of connection, warmth, and acceptance. The emphasis turned from treating abnormal conditions to helping normal people with everyday problems. It went from impersonal medical terminology to less intimidating language. Patients became clients. Analysis became therapy or counseling. Rogers made counseling accessible, and he changed the emphasis from analyzing defense mechanisms to focusing on the client. Originally, Rogers called his approach non-directive therapy. The assumption was that clients were given no direction at all. They had complete control over their sessions. But of course, Rogers did give subtle direction, so later he changed the name to a more accurate description of client-centered therapy. Therapy should focus on the needs and the goals of the client not a predetermined goal of the therapist. Consequently, a client-centered therapist is relatively weak in the sense that they don't give advice or homework, but they guide the client towards self-discovery. Rogers stressed the importance of the client-therapist relationship. The therapist should actively develop a strong relationship with the client through active listening, clarification, and paraphrasing. This friendly attitude was in direct contrast to psychoanalysis, behaviorism, and most other approaches. For Rogers, setting a warm, friendly environment was key to counseling success. Relationship allows the client to open up, put down their defenses, and feel safe. In the safety of a confidential relationship, clients could, many for the first time, experience unconditional positive regard. Rogers differentiates between conditional positive regard and unconditional positive regard, total acceptance. In conditional positive regard, love is contingent on meeting a standard. I love you if, or often, if you love me, you would. When people make love contingent on doing something for them, meeting their needs, acting according to their standards, their love is not fully free. In unconditional positive regard, you are accepted for who you are, just the way you are. Like Maslow, Rogers assumed that people are basically good and mentally healthy. All of their abnormalities, mental illness, criminality, etc., the natural tendency is toward growth and normalcy. The primary tendency is to maintain, enhance, and grow. Growth is not effortless, but is the most likely outcome. For Rogers, the key to understanding people is to understand the individual's phenomenological field, a sort of world view. Each person has their own perception of reality. So reality must be interpreted on an individual basis. An event is not as important as an individual's interpretation of it. Emotions play a large role in Rogers' theory. The summary is, emotions facilitate behavior. That is, we act because we feel. If we want to change how we act, we have to experience how we feel. In therapy, clients are encouraged to get in touch with their feelings and to express them. For many Rogerians, therapy is not a success unless the client feels deeply enough to cry. In contrast to Freud's id, ego, and superego, Rogers is a self-theorist. He believes that self gradually emerges, particularly from interactions with our significant others. We learn to become ourselves by interacting with others. We learn to love by experiencing love. We learn to accept ourselves by being accepted by others.